Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Uh, as you may know, if you've been following the channel, uh, I've been involved with atomic rifling and creative operations on development of the standard pattern muzzle loader. Uh, and of course, we've done enough testing and analysis to be confident that you know, one of these is never going to blow up within normal loading scenarios. However, that begs the question of just how much of an overload would it take to damage one of these muzzle loaders. So I've got a prototype here today. Uh, this one doesn't have a stock on it because I am not going to be shooting it by hand today. Uh, instead, we're going to set it up in my proof testing apparatus and fire it remotely so that we can subject it to a series of overload scenarios and see just how much it can take before it fails. Now, according to the owner's manual, the maximum powder charge for this gun is 120 grains of black powder or pyrodex, and the maximum projectile weight is 500 grains. However, I have a few of these 750 grain 50 caliber bullets, so why don't we load up one of these with say 240 grains of black powder, you know, double the maximum powder charge, and let that be our first overload scenario. Well, there's our 240 grains of powder, plus maybe a little bit of extra. There's our 750 grain bullet. Well, aside from a little bit of powder burn on the ramrod pommel, which is pretty superficial, the gun survived that overload perfectly intact. Of course, if a person had fired that load, the recoil might have broke their shoulder or something. I don't know what it would have done to the shooter, but it didn't really do anything to the gun. So, speaking of the ramrod, why don't we load it up the same way again, except this time we'll leave the ramrod in the barrel when we fire it. Well, that thoroughly destroyed our ramrod, bent it all up, shattered the pommel knob, but look at this. You know, there's this groove in the end of the ramrod, and that is now full of a continuous ring of lead. What must have happened is that the, there is so much pressure in the chamber, the lead bullet actually flowed around the ramrod and filled up that groove. At least that's the only explanation I can come up with. That is interesting. I've never seen anything like that before. Anyway, aside from this, our muzzle loader looks just fine. So I'm going to get a new ramrod and we'll try something else. For this next test, why don't we fill the barrel about halfway up with powder and then the rest of the way up with lead shot and maybe put a mini ball right at the muzzle to uh, keep the shot from spilling out. That's probably about the most extreme overload scenario I can think of, just using normal black powder and shot.
put a leather patch on top of the powder here. Okay, so we're right about halfway. Powder's right about there. Can you see the shot in there? It's just shy of the muzzle. Put a mini ball on top of that. Well, my uh, testing bench may have taken a little bit of damage from the recoil on that last test, but once again, the muzzle loader itself survived perfectly intact. I think it's going to take more than a simple overload to do any damage to this thing. However, another uh, scenario that can be very dangerous if it happens in the field when you're actually shooting a gun is an obstructed bore. So, to start with, I think I'm just going to load this up with more of a normal, responsible uh, load. We'll say 120 grains of powder behind a 365 grain round ball, something you might realistically use for hunting. Uh, but then, we'll stick the muzzle in the dirt a couple of times to create a bore obstruction, and we'll see how this handles that scenario. Well, I am seeing some very superficial scratching of the bore. Uh, it's probably safe to say that packing your barrel full of dirt and then shooting it out is not good for the bore. Uh, however, in this test, obviously the gun did not explode, the barrel didn't even bulge, so I think for our next test let's try a little bit more severe bore obstruction. Uh, this time I'll double the powder charge, so we'll use 240 grains of powder behind the same 365 grain mini ball, and this time we'll stage one of those 750 grain lead projectiles just inside the muzzle.
Well, we finally have some visible damage in the form of a bulge in the barrel right where we had our bore obstruction. Now, that said, the rest of the gun still seems to be perfectly intact. So, I think it can still be subjected to one more form of abuse, namely using the wrong kind of propellant. Once upon a time, I picked up some reloading supplies at a yard sale. You know, it was a couple dollars for the whole box of supplies, and most of them were still in their original packaging. Uh, but in this box, there was also an unmarked container of an unidentified substance that visually resembles smokeless powder. Probably a relatively slow-burning rifle powder, but, since it's not labeled, not identified, and certainly not in its original packaging, it's definitely not something I would use for normal, responsible reloading. However, since we're doing a destructive test on this muzzle loader today, I thought it might be interesting to load it up with 120 volumetric grains of our unidentified propellant and see what happens. We'll put a standard mini ball on top of that. Well, I'm not seeing any new or additional damage from that shot. Shall we double the powder charge and try again? I'm still not seeing any additional damage. Okay, one final test. A double charge of the wrong propellant plus a bore obstruction. Well, I guess that's the end of our barrel, both literally and figuratively. Well, we finally broke our gun, or at least blew a piece off the end of the barrel there. Now, really the rest of it is still perfectly intact, so honestly I'd be tempted just to clean up that flared muzzle a little bit and have myself a 50 caliber rifled blunderbuss. Uh, but anyway, as a matter of principle you should always be careful to abide by the recommended loads that manufacturers provide for their guns, but in the case of this gun it seems like there's a pretty large margin of safety on the recommended loads. Uh, at least it seemed remarkably resilient to the overloads that we subjected it to today. So, I think that concludes our testing, at least for now. So, until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.